What is up guys, quick note before we get into this video, I just wanted to quickly plug my TikTok because I have started creating really short, snappy, fun content over on my TikTok page. I've had it for a while but I've not really used it and I thought now would be a pretty good time to do so. So if you enjoy what you see on the channel but you want to see more instant reaction to certain things like I've done a reaction to tonight's England lineup, a reaction straight after the match and especially when the Borough season starts I'll be doing instant reaction to Borough news, coming out of Borough games, maybe even putting clips on from Borough matches. So if you're interested in more short form, quirky, fun little content as well as just cool little games and other things we might do on there then yeah go and follow me over on tiktok as well as other socials which are all in the description below anyway enjoy the video whatever the hell i've just watched should be condemned as a crime against football what is up guys welcome back to the channel and unfortunately i'm here to talk about england once again because well it's safe to say I've had better evenings, I've had more enjoyable evenings, in fact I think I've had more enjoyable naps than what I've just witnessed, which was a drab, a dull, a uninspiring, a terribly tepid and boring nil-nil draw between England and Slovenia. A nil-nil draw that somehow, somewhere, still enables England to go through as group winners of group C. We have gone through scoring only two goals and winning only five points. And we've topped the group. It's absolutely insane. It is officially the lowest scoring group in the history of the European Championships. And we are so goddamn lucky because we now face a third place team from either Group D, E or F. That could be a number of different teams. The only confirmed group, uh, the only confirmed third place team from Group D is the Netherlands at the moment. Despite not looking that impressive, I think would do pretty well up against this England team. You've got Group E, which is a complete free-for-all at the moment. And then you're probably looking at the Czech Republic or Turkey in Group F. But regardless, I cannot quite get over how dull this performance was. It was absolutely dreadful. Once again, I mean, there were moments in the first half where I thought we might be picking it up, we might be starting to get somewhere, you know, we we had runners running beyond Harry Kane, unlike against the Denmark game, we had Foden and Saka trying to get him behind, we had Bellingham drifting inwards, uh, drifting outwards, Foden drifting in. We seemed slightly better but I say slightly as in the bar is is not even low the bar is underground at this point there isn't even a bar it was that bad but still you know we are so boring and lethargic to watch it is terribly dull and it is a crime against football I think what Gareth Southgate is doing with this England team I don't know what's more of a crime the fact that he is so badly utilising such a gifted squad, or the fact that Denmark, Slovenia and Serbia have allowed us to somehow win this group. Either way, someone needs locking up for this shit. So anyway, th there weren't really any chances of note, to be honest. We did have a goal disallowed, which did come from a relatively decent move with a good play from the left-hand side. Obviously, Phil Forden was sadly offside in the build-up to that. Again, Slovenia didn't really test England didn't really get through us again I think our defense was solid but we're just we're just not brave enough we're not brave enough we're not taking enough risks we're not attacking we're not committing men forward it seems like the handbrake is is it's stuck on with this England team and Southgate won't take it off and I think the writing was on the wall once the lineup was was dropped I couldn't quite fathom that he'd only made one change in the starting 11 I mean in what world do you look at the two previous games and think that Conor Gallagher is the answer? Just changing Conor Gallagher in for Trent is the answer. It is beyond comprehension as to why he thought that would spawn any sort of different result. And although we were slightly better, minuscule, because I don't think we could have got worse than Denmark, 
doing it with the same 11 pretty much I, I don't quite understand and we, we spoke about this I spoke about it on the Borough Breakdown we spoke about it on the channel before you shouldn't be experimenting in tournaments you, you shouldn't be you should go in knowing your best 11 you should go in knowing your best system we very much look like a, a team who we, we're just throwing shit at a wall and hoping something sticks at this point Gareth Southgate looks clueless he looks lost he looks like he does not know what he's really doing he's just hoping something will work and will stumble across something that clicks but I think it's quite telling that Conor Gallagher was the change he made going into this game and Conor Gallagher was the one took off at half time that for me is a sign of a manager who is desperately experimenting desperately trying to find a fix and yet isn't willing to to really twist you know, in, in a situation like this, I just don't get why he didn't give Anthony Gordon more time. I don't get why he didn't give Cole Palmer more time. There are individuals in this team that are simply just not turning up. I do not understand what on earth has happened to Jude Bellingham. He's gone missing since the opening game against Serbia. It, the drop-off is astounding. This is a, a guy who was tipped to win the Ballon d'Or. You know, a, a Champions League winner. I mean, the only possible excuse for this or reason is that he's carrying some really terrible injury because it's incredible how far off some of these footballers look and how much they're playing within themselves and the fact that we've won this group is absolutely astounding and I know we're going to come out and, and Southgate will come out and others I'm sure will come out and say the goal was to win the group that's what we wanted we're in the knockout stage what's everybody mourning about but genuinely that is just masking over how terrible we've been so far. And I tell you, it will take one decent side to absolutely put this England team away. The only, the only saving grace we'll have is that our defence might be solid enough to keep a good team out. But we would not lay a glove on an opposition. In fact, maybe if a team really stepped onto us... We might be able to exploit them in behind. And there might be gaps that we can then take advantage of. So, so maybe, maybe in some strange way, we need to play a better team. Who's going to come at us? Who's going to allow us to counter them and, and, and utilise the space in behind and the gaps that will be created? I think it, maybe it is just a case of going up against teams who sit back... We're absolutely useless and we can't break any of them down. But that's not going to be the case because, as I say, the side of the draw that we're on is unbelievably generous. We, we've gotten away with it. You know, had Denmark scored in their game, which also finished nil-nil, we'd have been on the other side of the draw. But as it happens, we have avoided a potential game with Germany in the last 16. And we've got Switzerland, Italy... And Austria on our side of the draw. Likelihood is we'll hit Italy, maybe, if they beat Switzerland. Which isn't a guarantee with the way they're playing. But on the other side, we've somehow avoided Spain, Germany, Portugal and France. Which is quite crazy, to be honest with you. So, we might have an easy route, which might continue to mask the problem. It might give us more time to somehow find the formula... But if Gareth Southgate is not willing to make the changes and is only willing to bring in Conor Gallagher, for Christ's sake, then when are we or how are we going to find a solution to this? It's, it's almost like he's, he's stubborn and he's certain that this 11 will work when it clearly isn't. He needs to sacrifice some of these big players in order for the team to work better. Whether it's Palmer in for Saka or Foden or whether it's Gordon in for Saka or Foden, or whoever, I don't know who partners Rice, I still can't quite believe Wharton's not being given a minute yet, but yeah, everything he's tried thus far hasn't worked. He doesn't seem like he's willing to change it, so I don't know if we're waiting to be beaten by a better team, we're biding our time until we're inevitably knocked out, I don't know, but so far... The only positive is the literal result that we're through and we're top somehow. But the fact we're through and top is a crime. And unless we book up our ideas, as we've said already, we're going out of this tournament pretty soon. Unless things change quick. So there's my thoughts on England's final group game. 
it really peaked, didn't it, in the opening few minutes of the opening game. Since then, it has been dire. And uh, I could say, well, we need to just have faith that the Southgate will muster something up and find the formula, but I genuinely don't believe he will. So, without sounding too pessimistic, I genuinely feel like we might get far by chance and by a bit of fortune, but it will not take much for, for a side to beat England at the minute. I just think we look so dull going forward. A team with this much talent should not be as terrible to watch as this. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What a terrible game that was. And yeah, if you like what you see, hit a like on this video. We'll be reviewing however many games are left of this tournament, as well as obviously other football content to come. Subscribe, as I say. Hit the bell so you never miss a video. Give it a like, as it really helps. But most importantly, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Because dearie me, as I say, I've had more exciting naps than that. Um, it was utterly, utterly dull. So I'll see you guys in the next one. It can only get better from here. Surely.